Hello there, family of Christ. I want to share with you what I've entitled The Journey in the Kingdom of God. So I want to go from how our journey in God's kingdom begins and what the Lord's expected end for us as far as uh, our life in His kingdom. I want to start off with a scripture here in John 3, 3. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, him being Nicodemus, a Pharisee, he came to Jesus. He heard Jesus preach about this kingdom of God. And he had seen Jesus demonstrate the power of the kingdom. But Nicodemus didn't understand because he couldn't see any kingdom physically. So he came to Jesus to ask him about it. And Jesus responded and said, I say unto thee that except a man be born again, he cannot see this kingdom. In other words, Nicodemus, the reason why you cannot see this kingdom is because you're not born again. And then Nicodemus asked the question, but I'm an old man. How can I enter into my mother's womb and be reborn? Then Jesus even explained further in John 3, 6. He said, what is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, you, Nicodemus, you're, you're talking about your natural birth, but what I'm talking about is a spiritual birth. Okay, what I want to do in this session is to show you how the natural birth is very similar to how the spiritual birth happens, even though they happen in two different realms. One is in natural, one is in the spiritual, but what happens is very similar. And I'm going to show you that. Before that, I want to look at this scripture here in Colossians 1.13. It says, who hath delivered us, talking about Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness so we were in one realm known as the power of darkness. That is where we were from. That was our lives in that sphere of the kingdom of darkness. And it says Jesus had released us from there or delivered us from there and transferred us. So we've been released or transferred from one realm, power of darkness, and has brought us into his kingdom. And that happened in our born again experience. We were transferred from one realm that we were confined to to a whole new different world, a whole new different realm. And most of us can testify that that actually did happen. Now, I want to show an image here. This is a, an image of a baby in the womb. Okay? So we're going through natural birth, and we want to relate that to how the spiritual birth happens. This is a baby in the womb. Now, let's say that baby is you. Okay? You before you got born again. You were confined to the womb or use the womb here as the world that was your own world that you were confined to in fact you were conceived in this world that that was all you knew and that was actually the world that formed you david says in psalms 51 verse 5 he says i was shaped in iniquity in other words i was formed in sin you know in romans 5 it says about Adam, through one man's disobedience, many became sinners. We were just born sinners because it had been passed on. We, we were formed. We were born. Sin was in, our, in the fabric of our nature. And the world, actually, that we were formed in was sinful. So we were formed and shaped in sin. Then what happened was we heard the gospel. Now, in this world of sin that we were in, wasn't just a world of sin. It also had the consequences of sin. So most of us were in the bondage of fear, of distress, of pain. You know, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And when we talk about death, it doesn't just mean physical death. We're talking about emotional death, spiritual death, uh, sicknesses, anything that is not the nature of God. This, is what, this was part of our lives because we were born in sin. All the consequences of sin was all part of who we were. And that's how we lived. It was a depressing world of bondage. Okay, so we heard the gospel. And Paul says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So here you were in, in one confined to this space, this world of darkness. And you heard a message of hope. That you don't have to be in this place anymore. You don't have to live in your sins anymore. That Jesus has come and he is able to forgive you your sin and bring you out of that world. You, that's the message we hear. That message of hope, which is 
a message for all that are in this world that there is hope. We don't have to live the way we're living. We don't have to uh, be have the addictions that we have. We don't have to be slave to sin. Jesus has come so that we can be released or transferred from that world. Colossians 1.13 Transferred from that kingdom of darkness into a new kingdom where everything is different. Where we come under the rule of, a, of our Savior and our Lord who, who gives us a whole new experience because we are under a whole new kingdom. His kingdom kingdom of the Lord Jesus. This is the message that Jesus was going about preaching and this is the message that you and I perhaps heard. The gospel. This means good news. You no longer have to be confined to the way you live in. There is hope you can come out. Now when we heard this gospel in this world that we were confined in or the womb, something began to happen. In Acts chapter 2 verse 37, it says when Peter on the day of Pentecost received the Holy Ghost and preached the gospel with such power, the people were pricked in their hearts. Now, that word pricked is talking about agitation. They, they were shaking. You know, um, I call that the contractions. This is where you start to think, oh, you start to, you begin to see that the world that you're in, that this is not, this is not life, bound to addictions, slave to sin, you know, distressed, no peace, you know, no hope. You start to, all these things began to go on, and I call that the contractions, the labor pains, because it's, it's almost as if you're ready to get out of this, um, this that world that you're confined to, that world of sin. You don't want to be a part of it anymore. Okay, so the contractions happen, and then there is uh, something begins to happen where you pushed out of that world. Okay, so this image here, you can see a baby that has been pushed out of the womb, contractions happen, and now they're pushed out. In the spiritual sense, you heard the gospel, now you push out of the world. You no longer want to be a part of that world. But look at this picture carefully here. This baby is out of the womb, but it's not really out because there is a cord that is connecting the baby to the womb. That cord um, is called the, the umbilical cord or the placenta. It's still connected and that needs to be cut off. If this baby wants to be completely free, it needs that cord cut off. Cutting off that cord that ties us into the, the womb or the past, I should say, is what repentance is all about. Repentance is when we begin to understand that we've sinned against the Holy God we, we begin to acknowledge the lifestyles that we have been living, the additions, the blaspheme, the profanity, all of this, we just begin to acknowledge that we have sinned against the Holy God. We confess this sin and we make a decision. We, want, we no longer want to have anything to do with that, with that life. We are willing to trust the Lord to help us to move forward. We don't want to be associated with our past anymore. That is repentance. This is where the umbilical cord is cut off. You cut off from your past in repentance. Repentance is a decision. It first flows through your mind, and then you have the thoughts of it, but then it comes out of your mouth in confession, and then there's an action where you turn and you say, no, I'm going, I'm moving away from this. So it's not just that um, you've, only come out of the womb now, now you've made any ties you have with the womb or the past or with that world of darkness. Okay, so that's repentance and repentance is to God because God created this world. He has standards that he, he had. There's a certain life that God expected us to live, to love him, to love one another. Every man has fallen short. We, we have to repent to him. Understand that we are sinners. Many times people say, I'm a good person. But if you compare yourself to another person, you may think that you're good. But if you compare your actions to God's standards, you know that you fall short. Okay, so repentance is to this creator God that we've sinned, a holy God that we've sinned against. In natural birth, when the cord is cut off, there's something else that is done. That baby, yes, is disconnected from their past or the womb in one sense because the cord is cut off, but they still have 
uh, the blood on them. There's a lot of fluids on them. There's a lot of dirt, you know, on them that needs to be washed. And this is talking about baptism. Baptism is sort of a culmination of what happens in repentance. In repentance, the cord is cut off, but you still have stuff on you from the past. You still have these fluids, all this stuff that came from the womb on you. So you take a bath. You're washed. You go down the water and your sins are washed. They're washed from you. They're literally washed of you in water baptism. And water baptism is to Jesus. A lot of the times when the Bible speaks about water baptism, it always connects it with the Lord Jesus because it's connecting it to what happened with him on the cross. In water baptism, you die. In water baptism, you are buried as he is buried. And as he resurrected, you resurrect into a newness of life. Okay, so water baptism is to the Lord Jesus. And then in natural birth, something else happens where the midwife or the nurse or whoever it is would spank him or do something to make the baby have their first cry. Now, prior to this, you have to understand the baby has been relying on on the on on the mother or on the womb to to breathe, you know, because through the placenta, the, their source of life was coming from the womb. But now, because it's out, it needs to have a new source of life, and this is the whole born again experience. God cuts you away from your past, the the past that fed you life. And he reconnects you to a new life. So he's really bringing you into a new life. Or he has brought you into a new realm. And he's going to be the source of life in that realm. So the baby gasps for air. And they have their first breath. And their lungs begin to work. Okay. That is the laying on of hands to receive the Holy Spirit. And usually when hands are laid on, what happens as we read in the Bible? People are filled. And they begin to speak in other tongues. They begin to speak in tongues. And that's what we see happening in the book of Acts. Just like the midwife would tap the baby, the baby starts crying. When hands are laid on, they're filled and they begin to speak in tongues. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, for the washing away of your sins. We, we talked about that. And it says, you shall have your first cry, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that's in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Now, this is called the foundation. Everyone that will begin this journey in Christ must go through this if they're going to leave or start their journey on this earth. And one, I've said this before, um, you know, people like to ask about the thief on the cross. The thief, his, the next thing that was going to happen to him was death. He wasn't going to continue living on earth. You and I, when we get born again, we're still going to have to continue our life on earth. Uh, what we've gone through prepares you for life in the kingdom of God on this earth. Just like a baby leaves the womb and they're ready to live in, a, in this new environment. Uh, same thing when we come into God's environment. Uh, this is necessary for us to really uh, get started in God's kingdom on this earth. So when all of that has happened, we are born again, spiritually speaking. Now, what you do see here is that the Godhead, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of them have been involved in the born again. Your repentance was to God. Your baptism was to Jesus. And you received the Holy Spirit. So the whole Godhead has been a part of your born again experience. And that's amazing. Second Peter 1.4, it talks about how we have been, we have been made partakers of, of the divine nature of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17, you are now a new creature. You have nothing to do with your past anymore. It says, all things have passed away. And it says, behold, all things have become new. Now, as a born again, you're born as a baby. When a person has repented, they've been born of water, they've been born of the Spirit of God. There are telltale signs, okay? The first one is there's a desire for the Word. You know, when you have babies, babies need milk. They live on milk. They need milk. They hunger for milk. 
And it's the same thing spiritually speaking. A person is born again. There is a desire for the word of God. So that's that's a fruit of the born again. It, it's a sign that shows that they're truly born again. They will have a desire for food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Spiritual babies need spiritual food. Or spiritual people need spiritual food. But we start them off with, the Bible says in Peter, 1 Peter 2, 1, milk. Because they're babies. What is the milk? So this is the, the, the more basic uh, doctrinal teachings that we give them. Uh, what they have become, you know, what has happened. Just explaining to them what has happened. It's very foundational. You don't teach deep things to a baby. You know, you don't give meat to a baby because they can choke on it. But what I'm talking about now is look for a desire of the word as a fruit of a born again life. They must have a hunger for God's word. Okay. The second thing, 1 John 3, 14, people that are born again, truly born again, they will have a desire or a love for the brethren. They would love other born again believers just like themselves. Why? Because when you get born again, you 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 have the same spirit as everyone else who's born again. A lot of the times persecution comes from misunderstanding. You know, when you get born again, you have a different spirit. And sometimes uh, people in your biological family will persecute and, and hate you because they don't understand you now. You are now a different person. The reason is they don't share the same spirit as you. You, you identify with them in the blood, but you're no longer just blood anymore. You are a spiritual person and you will connect with other spiritual people more than you actually connect with those of the blood. Because that's natural and what you've been born into is a spirit. You know, it, it's in the spirit. So they will have a love for the brethren. Um, the other thing as well is uh, 1 John 3, 9. A person who is truly born again, who, who's had the foundation right, they've been born the right way. They do not continue in sin. Because your nature has changed. You didn't care when you sinned or practiced sin before. Now you get convictions when you're doing something wrong. And because of that conviction, you cannot find comfort in sin. So these are very important to look for when you want to tell if a person is truly born again, or maybe use that to examine your own self. Do you have a hunger for God's word? Do you love the brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you love them? Do you, do you have a comfort in sin? Are you practicing sin? You know, these things are very necessary to ask. So from a baby, you progress on to become a child. Children are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. As a child, children are very moldable. So every child needs attention from the elderly. They need direction. Uh, they need instruction. And they just need that, that, that guidance. I should also say that when you're born again, God gives you the Holy Spirit. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit is... And Jesus says he's to teach you and he's to guide you. So he's coming, the Holy Spirit is coming to help you grow, to, to help you understand the word of God. Yes, he, he will put you with a family and I'll go into that where there will be teachers to help you. But primarily the Holy Spirit is also going to be there to teach you to help you grow. He's assigned to you to see to your growth. He says, I've written to you, children, because your sins are forgiven. He's kind of reassuring them that their sins are forgiven. Why? Because they need that reassurance. Uh, children, are, 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 they're easily moved. And for that reason, uh, when children are in the family, those that are elderly have to be there for them, give them attention, help them. This is, this is all spiritually speaking. So we progress from children to Youth, John 2, 13, it says, I have written unto you, young man, for you have overcome the wicked one and the word of God abides in you. There is more consistency as far as living a holy life. It says the youth do not live on milk because they have advanced. They now go on the stake of the word, the meat of the word. And what does that mean? This is where you talk the deeper things of God. Why? Because you can take them now. You're no longer a baby. Those things, you're not going to choke on those things anymore. You taught the deeper things so you can even continue to grow. And the next level of growth, he, he, John addresses them as the fathers. So he didn't say the father because there's only one father, 
which is the Father God. But the fathers here, he's talking about those who are much more experienced in the faith. They've been walking for much longer. They're more spiritually sound, spiritually matured. There is even a greater level of consistency as far as their walk with the Lord Jesus is concerned. These are the fathers, okay? Or the seniors or the, the elders. And they are there to help the other young ones grow. They are there to see the Holy Spirit is working in everyone but at the same time, he would also use the, the those that are more senior uh, with the experience and everything to help the others, disciple them. And the end goal is to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus. So you can see the progression there. Yes, we go through, we, we first of all come from the world, from the world of darkness. We heard the gospel. It, it caused contractions and we're forced out of that world. Repentance is when we cut off from the past. We washed so that everything, every stain that the old world has on us is washed away. Um, you know, we, we begin to have a new source of life, which is the Holy Spirit coming into us. Uh, we're now born again. The whole Godhead is involved in our born again experience. We, we babies that need milk, the milk of the word, which is the basic teachings. Um, we, we become children, but children are still moldable. So therefore, uh, we, we understand that we need help. We need to have other brethren around to grow. You know, we need to ask all the questions we can. We need to learn as much as we can. We need to grow. Then we progress from there to become youth where now we, we get to uh, uh, be trained and disciple and, and really learn about the deeper things of Christ. We also begin to see, uh, begin to understand who we have become and our authority over the devil. There's more consistency as far as living a holy life you know, all of these things happen. We progress on to become the fathers, those that are available to help other new babies in Christ or new children or new youth, you know, bringing our experience to bear to help uh, those that have begun their journeys in Christ and ultimately move on to conform to the image of the Lord Jesus. This is God's purpose for us. The church is a family and in a family, you're likely to have all of this. You're likely to have those that are older, the younger ones, you like you, babies. You know, they're, they're all there. But we need to know where everyone is and we need to really uh, feed according to the level. You know, it's very important to do that. And we need to spend more time uh, with those that are much younger. Allow those that are more mature uh, to be able to do certain things and even rely on the Holy Spirit even more. You know, so... This is how things happen in the natural, but of course we've related all of that to how things happen or should happen in the realm of the spirit as far as our born again experience is concerned and our journey from the start to the finish, which is to conform uh, to the image of our Lord and King, Jesus. So a little encouragement I have is that Let's continue to pursue Christ because ultimately God wants to conform us to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church of God is one big family. We have one father, God the Father. And the Bible says Jesus is our Lord. He's also our big brother and we are our brothers and sisters. So let's continue to encourage one another, exalt one another, uh, be there for one another to, to do whatever we can, whatever support we can to see us. Uh, get to this ultimate end of conforming to Christ. But it's also very important that we have to understand that primarily God has assigned to us the Holy Spirit. We must learn to walk with the Spirit. So even as babies, we feed on the Word, the milk of the Word. We desire, we hunger for the Word, but we begin to learn to move in step with the Holy Spirit and have communion with the Holy Spirit as we progress on to children, as we progress on to become youth, and by the time we're fathers, we know we're really um, moving in with the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, the goal is to be conformed to the image of Christ. That may not happen in this life or in our lifetime, but we have to be on a progression. Okay, so this is how it is and what it is to start our journeys in this new sphere or this new realm called the kingdom of God. And that is the expected end. This is the reason why God called us is to work with us now this is awesome to know that no matter where you are the lord has not finished with you he hasn't he's still working on you if you're not 100 percent 
looking like Jesus as far as your thoughts, your words, your actions in every way. That means God is still working on you and that's an awesome thing. But he, God is going to finish what he starts. So let's continue to surrender to him and allow him to work in us. Be blessed, family of Christ. I pray that this has opened your, your mind to, to what the Lord's plan is for you and I. God bless you.